Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. It's the end of February, which means it's episode two of my new series from backlog to catalog. So if you know my channel, I do whole videos when I buy stuff, but then either it goes into the backlog or it goes into my current listening. And if I hear it enough times and I like it, then it officially makes it as part of my catalog. My collection goes on the shelf and into the database. And that's what this video series is. These are the ones that made it. They graduated from the backlog officially to the catalog, my collection. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. You'll see what really made it. Now, some of this stuff may look familiar from recent haul videos. Some of this stuff has been in the backlog for a long time. Without further ado, I got 22 albums that are being promoted from backlog to catalog, alphabetical order. Let's start right now. We're going to start with uh, one vinyl album. I have like 50 or 60 vinyl albums down there in the uh, backlog but for whatever reason I started pulling this one out this month this is a really old cool vinyl collection called Koss and that's uh, Paul Kossoff of course from Free and this is just a real good uh, old double vinyl album after he passed away and it's all deep cuts uh, some of it's free some of it's from Backstreet Corolla and it's all really good so uh, that finally Pulled out of the backlog, and I hope you don't fall. Paul Kossoff and the collection called Koss. Alphabetical order and CD. We got Christopher Cross. I am not a huge fan. I have his first album. I picked this up for a reason. I like the first album, but I always thought it was kind of light for me. And when I listened closely, I, and I talked about it once in a video, I said, I hear some great guitar, but it's buried in a mix. I saw this real cheap CD, and the reason why I got it is right there. It says live. And this is a CD recorded live in Tokyo, Japan, 2009. They called it Super Hits, but it's a live record. And I figured, well, this might be a chance for me to hear Christopher Cross. He's a really good song, but I, I would hear him with some balls and some guitar. Nah, it's still pretty lightweight. Uh, a lot of piano, a lot of saxophone. Uh, I like saxophone, but for me, saxophone is more like less is more. Uh, you know, even Springsteen, they don't go to uh, saxophone that often. It stands out. This is loaded with saxophone. So my recommendation, Christopher, not that you're even going to see my videos, let's hear some blazing guitar. I know it's there somewhere. Uh, Al Green comes next. This is Al Green's Greatest Hits. And Al, my hat on vinyl for a long time, back in the day. And this is what I call an upgrade. This is digitally remastered. And the nice thing about these, it's got bonus tracks, and that's what I like. So the original album had 10 songs, and now we're up to 15, remastered, and got to have some uh, Al Green, right? Uh, can't get next to you, babe. And, uh, of course, uh, let's stay together. Good stuff. Soul from Al Green. Okay, uh, as you know, or maybe you don't know, last year I really got into horse slips, a great Irish band that's fairly unknown. Um, this is a beautiful collection. If you've been watching my channel, it's been up here forever, which is what they call it. I call it the docket, my current listening. I've been listening to this thing for months, and I've heard it, ooh, I don't know, six, seven, or eight times. And this is the inside. They did a beautiful job. It's got a beautiful booklet. It's on Horse Lips record. And it's loaded. Two CDs with 34 songs, starting from the very beginning, up through their more Americanized, almost Jethro Tullish albums, uh, right there, The Man Who Built America. Um, great song, you might know. I'll be waiting. Check that one out. But Horse Lips, and this is Treasury, the very best of Horse Lips, and I am thrilled to have them in my collection. Now, last month I showed, I went to a thrift store and I went Elton John crazy, and I've been listening to a bunch of them, but I still must have another 10 down there that I haven't gotten through. These are the highlights right here. Uh, I went to these right away. Uh, these are fan club releases. And it's Elton John live at Madison Square Garden. And he even says in it, it's him alone. He, it was the first time he ever played Madison Square Garden. Just him on piano and keyboards and no band. And it is awesome, man. This is a great fan club CD. Elton John live at Madison Square Garden. And then there was volume two, same tapes, but different songs, and also just uh, phenomenal. I'm thrilled to find these at a thrift store, and they're great listens. And then if that wasn't enough, we had this one called Live Plus with an enhanced CD. 
different show again fan club release and there's the set list from this and this is just great stuff so i was thrilled to get these elton john live uh cds that were fan club only really cool I don't want these guys to fall all right let's keep going i did get some more commercial elton john cds well i've had hunky chateau on vinyl <laughs> almost since it came out then I had it on CD. This one is an upgrade because uh, all the other Elton John albums I have on CD were the classic years remastered with bonus tracks. This one, I had the plain version. It drove me crazy. So for one extra song and the remix, uh, the, the remaster, I should say, I picked up Honky Chateau. So uh, classic album, obviously. Uh, let's stay there. Hopefully it won't fall. Uh, I picked up this live one called One Night Only Greatest Hits. This was just okay. Clearly, he was shooting for commercial success, and he's got guests like Mary J. Blige and Anastasia and Brian Adams and Ronan Keating, whoever that is, Kiki D doing Don't Go Breaking My Heart. Good set list, good performance, but definitely not essential Elton John to me. This was a cool uh, fan club promo type thing, Elton John Live, The Captain and the Kid from Rose Hall. Um, and it's only got five tracks, but this was a promo around The Captain and the Kid really good even though it's only five tracks and then these two are great uh these were upgrades songs from the west coast um this was a double cd version with a whole extra second disc of remixes and things like that this was even more interesting peach tree road another great latter day elton album that i've had forever but this came with an exclusive nine track dvd concept from the tabernacle in atlanta and it was amazing, including a lot of songs from Peachtree Road, a great latter-day Elton John album. So um, if you like Elton and you're only thinking about the classics, like I typically do, these two latter-day albums are great. Uh, speaking of classics, of course I've had the Elton John album for a long time, um, but this was the deluxe edition with piano demos and things like that, and I picked this one up. Uh, as well and this was a great this is an album that i really probably like a lot of people i didn't discover it until i got the live uh symphony orchestra album from australia where he played a lot of those songs and then i went back to it great stuff uh this was a cool one uh little steven this was on bgo records a british label that specializes in older albums that are not as so popular i have a bunch of them and this was great. Uh, Little Steven, of course, uh, you know him from the E Street Band, but he's got a really good solo career. And this was two of his albums in a slipcase, and it looks like that. Nice thing about this is both albums get their own CD. Men Without Women and Voice of America. Look at the size of that band. Uh, unfortunately, you know, he tried, Little Steven. Didn't have too much commercial success, and not easy to afford a band that size. And and, of course, he went back to the E Street Band. But uh, some really good stuff on here, really soulful. You know, that's what Little Steven is, that soul. And uh, those are really good records. Give them a shot. I actually had, this is the original CD I had, Men Without Women. This was on, uh, I don't know, Razor's Edge Records or something like that. So nice to have it, uh, you know, on that collection. Uh, sounds great. So, All right, some more that made from... The uh, backlog to the catalog, Molly Hatchet. Uh, this is a recent purchase, and this is the album No Guts, No Glory. This one is an example. You ever see these people who are like, you know, audiophiles? And they're like, oh, CDs suck, and, you know, vinyl is the greatest. Listen, I have tons of vinyl. I like vinyl. But uh, to me, at least on my stereo system, and I have a good vintage stereo system, nothing sounds better than a good digitally remastered cd it, you hear things you never heard on vinyl because vinyl has limitations built into the format this is an example of a cd that does not sound that good uh this is uh no guts no glory i think it's on like a cheapy sony music special products and it sounds like it this is not a great sounding cd it's a good record full of the pacemakers peacemakers is on there but not a good sounding cd this is a nice record from Van Morrison, Avalon Sunset. I knew a bunch of the songs going in. Whenever God Shines His Light, and Have I Told You Lately, and uh, some other songs as well. Fine uh, Van Morrison album, and uh, nice to have as well. Now, 
Let's continue. This was a cool find that's been in my backlog. And when I put it on, I was shocked how much I enjoyed it. This is Mike Oldfield in an album called Music of the Spheres. And this is an orchestral album that he wrote it, and then it was orchestrated with an orchestra. And um, I loved it. There's a thing there called Harbinger. The opening track is kind of an orchestral knockoff, shall I say, of Tubular Bells, which is such a great track. Uh, I This is a really good, if you like orchestral symphonic music, I was shocked how much... I enjoyed that album. This has been in my backlog forever. There we go. Let's move that up. Uh, this is a Graham Parker uh, collection called the Graham Parker Anthology. Passion is No Ordinary Words on Rhino. This came out a long time ago. I have a bunch of these. I call them mini boxes, really. Uh, and there's the set list. 20 songs on disc 1, 19 on disc 2. And it's, it's a good example of a guy... I. You know, a lot of people like me love the early Graham Parker stuff. And then the latter-day stuff got a little kind of slick and just not as good. And at least for me, I hear it plain and simple on this album. The first disc especially is great. But uh, nothing beats uh, Squeezing Out Sparks, which uh, my friend Sandy, when I was back in school, he turned me on to that. Uh, Streets of Philadelphia is just a CD single of Springsteen. Sometimes I'll find these for cheap. And they're always fun because they have like unreleased B-sides. In this case, they're not, it's really from the Unplugged album. But Streets of Philadelphia is a great track and uh, nice to have on its own little CD single. Certainly not essential, but fun. And if you watch my video from yesterday, this thing's been up there for months. And I finally graduated it from the backlog and the current listening to the catalog officially. And this is uh, Suede. This one says the London Suede, their most recent release called Auto Fiction. And this is the three CD version. If you're interested in a full review, I did one yesterday. And um, it has finally graduated. I think it took me, I'm not exaggerating. Oof. I must have heard this album 10, 11, 12 song, times before it made it officially into the database. One more, and that is this one. Um, this is Stephen Wilson, the Harmony Codex, his most recent release, and I did a full album review of this, so you could check that out in album re reviews. Um, I was just kind of meh on this album, but I, I like Stephen Wilson, fan of Porcupine Tree, and especially Blackfield, but this album was a mixed bag. But check out the full review uh, if you want more information on the Harmony Codex from Stephen Wilson. So there we go, 22 albums that graduated from the backlog to the catalog, and uh, we keep moving forward. I actually have bought a bunch of stuff recently, and I'll probably do a whole video uh, on the most recent purchases, and then some of it goes into active listening, and some of it goes into the backlog, and eventually you'll see it here. As always, I appreciate you watching me. I appreciate uh, your comments and let me know what you think about this stuff. And I hope you like this ongoing series. Um, have stay, What do I always say? Stay safe, stay healthy. And I'll see you next time on the Alan Rosenberg Show.